in chains, and I'm here to inform you today about the truth on all disorders. It's important to know what an eating disorder is. An eating disorder is one's obsession with food, weight, and exercise. <coughs> Someone with an eating disorder will go to the extreme to self-inflict harm and potentially put their life in danger in order to achieve their ideal body image. And it's also important to know what causes an eating disorder in people and what triggers emotion. <clears throat> people who develop eating disorders usually have problems dealing with food and weight, and they use their emotions to deal with it. Psychologically, they often feel like they don't have control of anything in their life. So they, use, so they use their weight to control something, since that's something that nobody can take away from them. The facts about eating disorders are about 4%, which is 4 out of 100 people, college-age people, have bulimia. About 50% of people who've been anorexic will develop bulimia as well. Without treatment, about 20% of people with eating disorders die. 90% of females have an eating disorder and 10% of males. With treatment, 60% recover, 36 to 37% will struggle for the rest of their life with an eating disorder, and 2 to 3% will die. About 1% of female adolescents have anorexia, which is about one of every hundred women with, between the ages of 10 and 20 are starving themselves, sometimes to death. There are different types of eating disorders. Anorexia nervosa. Anorexia is when people starve themselves and do not eat. They have Obsess over calories and they exercise daily. They never believe they're fit enough, even if they look emaciated, and they seem to use other types of diet pills, laxatives, and anything that will help them lose weight, pretty much. Bulimia. Bulimia is something that I guess it's caused and triggered by more of emotions as opposed to anorexia, and it's a less distorted vision of your body image. And with bulimia, people binge on their eating, and they try to remove the food that they've consumed throughout the day. So they'll either take laxatives or like throw up after every meal just to remove what they've eaten. And occasionally, when it gets severe, if they drink water or liquids, they'll throw that up as well. Even though anorexia and bulimia show plenty of similarities, bulimia usually contains people who are normal weight or overweight, as opposed to anorexia, and having anorexia and, or bulimia, and bulimia, you're usually underweight. So people who are bulimic tend to stay the normal weight and or higher since they binge on food a lot. There's something called a binge eating disorder which isn't very common. And some binge eating disorders are when somebody compulsively eats, and which usually means they're very insecure about themselves and they're very uncomfortable with something going on in their life, whether it's like a divorce or ending a relationship. And that's usually how binge, or binge eating disorders come about. And someone with a binge eating disorder may consume thousands of calories in a matter of minutes. And people with binge eating disorders are ashamed of their secret binges, and they're unable to control their habits despite how guilty they feel, which is why binge eating disorder also requires therapy. If you can see signs of someone suffering from an eating disorder, when someone's preoccupied with their weight, they have mood swings, hair loss, they lose their period, they're obsessed with calories, food, 
and body image. They, ex they ex exercise excessively, especially after meals. They have ra rapid weight loss or weight gain. And diet supplements or laxatives are used. They use excuses not to eat and go into the bathroom after every meal. People who have eating disorders often tend to eat alone because they don't want people to see what they eat, whether it's anorexia, bulimia, or binge eating disorder. How to confront someone on an eating disorder when you're concerned. You want to communicate your concerns to your friend or family member by giving specific instances where they've shown that you need to be concerned about them. For example, if you're having dinner with a family member and you see that they're frequently going to the bathroom after every meal, that's something you might want to confront them with. You want to avoid conflict with someone if you sense that they have problems with eating. Because if you argue, they're going to feel more insecure about their eating disorder and be more in denial. Instead, you want to be supportive to them and just try to help them. You want to use the eye roll when confronting someone that you believe they have an eating disorder. And avoid blaming them by using the word you instead of the word I. For instance, I, I'm concerned about your eating instead of you really need to start eating more. And you don't want to give simple solutions because eating disorders are serious and you can't solve the problem on your own. Can I turn it off from there? It's okay. Are you done? Um, and one more slide is the time over the time over. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Thank you.